Well, let's take a look at the problems in 4.1. This section deals with a fairly simplistic concept of linear approximations, but some of the problems can become a little tedious. Uh, and so I want to make sure I explain these in detail to you. Uh, first of all, uh, on this uh, problem number one, it's pretty uh, involved. It asks four different questions. Let me go to the screen first of all. Uh, it's asking us to estimate the change in a function. So that's just the change in the y values of the function using the linear approximation and using the calculator to compute both the error and the percentage error. We know that f of x is equal to the root of 2 plus x in this problem. And remember, a is just the point of interest. So this means from x equals 3 to x equals 3.1. So a is just the x value of interest, and we're interested in what's happening to the y value as x changes from 3 to 3.1. So as x increases a tenth of a unit, how many units does the y value? That's what the delta f is trying to give us there. Now, first, they're asking us to find an approximation for the, for the change in the y values or the change in the functional values. And then they want the error in that approximation uh, and then they want the error as a percentage error. Okay, now I, I said they wanted four things. Actually, they want three, but you have to find four to find those three items. Let me go ahead and maximize this. All right, so here's how I attack the problem. This is the problem that they gave me. Now, in order to find the approximation, I knew I had to go ahead and take the derivative. So I just thought of that as the group two plus X to the one half power. So its derivative is one half times the group to the negative one half times the derivative of the inside, which is just one. So this derivative simplified down to be one over two times the square root of two plus X. Now, I knew I would have to evaluate that derivative at the X value of interest at X equals A. So I went ahead and plugged the three into the derivative. And when I did, that gave me two on the square root of two plus three or one over two on the root of five in that, nom in that denominator. Now I go in and I find my approximate change in the function. The approximate change in the function is our derivative approximation. We just said, well, just evaluate the derivative at the point of interest and that's gonna give you the slope of the function and then multiply that by the change in the X values, that should give you a really good idea of the approximate change in the Y values. So that's what we're doing. We're finding the slope at the point of interest times the change in X. Well, the slope at the point of interest is the derivative of evaluated at A, which is the derivative evaluated at three. I've already done that up here. That's my one over two on the root of five. I multiply that by the change in X, 0.1. And when I did that, my calculator said, uh, approximately and achieve asked me to round to seven decimal places. So I did 0.022-3607. Now, after that, they wanted, to, they wanted to know the error, but you can't find the error if you don't know the exact change in the functional values. So I said, well, the, the exact change in the functional values are just going to be the function evaluated at the end point, which is a plus delta x minus the function evaluated at the beginning point, which is the point of interest f of a. So you say, well, that's just f of three plus point, that's f of 3.1 minus f of three. Well, what is f of 3.1? Easy, you plug it into your original function, two plus 3.1 would be 5.1. f of 3.1 is the square root of 5.1 minus f of three, which would give me the square root of two plus three square root of five. Uh, now that would be my exact value. I went ahead and got that uh, and I, I rounded it to one more decimal place than my approximation was to. Uh, I said square root of 5.1 minus square root of five is approximately 0.022-4998. That's gonna be more than accurate enough. Now, when I go into my error, the error is the absolute value of the actual change in F minus the approximated change in F. And so I can say, well, that's just the value I just found minus the approximation value that I found up here. When I do that inside of an absolute value, 
I'm going to get 0 0.00011. And now you can see here, that's exactly how I entered it into Achieve. To get that last answer on Achieve, what I did was I said, well, now we need to find the percentage error. The percentage error is nothing more than the error divided by the actual value. And it's the absolute value of that. And then to get it into a percent, you just multiply by 100%. So when I did this, uh, I got something like 0 0.00497. When you multiply it by 100% is like 0.497. Said to round to two decimal places in the percent. So 0.50% or you could just put 0.5. And the percentage, please keep in mind, is already there. So you don't have to type the percent in. In fact, it would be wrong if you do. Uh, it's already accounted for here. Uh, okay, so that was problem one. Problem two is pretty much the same thing. Uh, it is going to ask the four questions this time. Uh, it gives us a function up here, and then it asks for the approximate change in the function, the exact change in the function, and then the error in your approximation, and the percentage error. Okay, so like the last question, but slightly different in that in the last question, they explicitly told us what our A and what our delta X were equal to. And this one you need to understand. So you can say, well, all right, delta F is equal to F of 3.3 .3 minus F of 3. So you say, well, then the initial value of X you're interested in is 3. That's your A value. Well, what's happening? X is going from 3 to 3.3, and we're trying to find the change in the Y values. So your delta X in this case is just the difference from this X value to this X. It's 0.3 of a unit. That's the first thing I did here when I started working this out. I said, okay, uh, here's my initial problem. And from that initial problem, I must understand that A is your initial X value, 3. Delta X is your change between the two X values. So you say, well, that's going to be 0.3. Now, I know that the derivative is needed, so I went ahead and took the derivative. I used the quotient rule here, squared the denominator, brought the denominator up to the numerator, times the derivative of the numerator, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. And you can see that this simplified down to just be 0 minus 10X over that denominator squared. Now, I know I need to evaluate this derivative at the point of interest at x equals 3. So I went ahead and did that. f prime of 3 is going to be uh, negative 10 times 3 for negative 30 over 10 squared 100. Negative 30 over 100 reduces down to negative 3 tenths. Now, at that point in the problem, I can go in and say, well, all right, uh, I need to find my approximated value now. That approximated value, I can say, well, it's nothing more than the derivative evaluated at the point of interest times the change in the x value. In this problem, the derivative needs to be evaluated at 3. The change in x is 0.3. We already have both of these values. So in the place of the derivative of 3, I plugged in my negative 3 tenths times 0.3. I got my negative 0.09. Now, that's the value I enter in for the first answer. That's the approximate change in the y value as x moves from 3 to 3.3. Now I want to find the exact change. I say, well, okay, no problem. That's literally just plug in f of 3.3 minus f of 3. So you're plugging a 3.3 into this equation. When you do, you'll get this value. And then you subtract that from, if you plug a 3 into this equation, and obviously that's just going to be 1 over, sorry, 5 over 1 plus 9, which is 5 over 10. That's where the 0.5 came from. Use my calculator to subtract this out. And I see that the true change in F is that the, the function actually went down uh, 0.079478553 units. Uh, but Achieve wanted this rounded to six decimal places, so I had to fix that and uh, round it to six right here uh, in order to match the answer that they wanted right here. Now, the next two parts, 
the error in the approximation. Well, th that's easy. We can just say, well, the error in the approximation is just the absolute value of the difference between this number and this number. So that's what I did. It's the absolute value of the actual value minus the approximated value. When I did that, I got 0 0.010521. And again, it wanted six decimal places. Now the percentage error, you take the error that you just found, you divide it by the actual value that we found right here. You take that fraction, the absolute value of it, multiply it by 100%. When I did this, I got the 13.24 uh, and the percent, please remember, is already included on the achieved, so you don't type that in. I just did the 13.24. Now, those two are probably the longest two problems in the section. The rest get uh, quite a bit quicker than that. Uh, especially these linearization problems. These linearization problems, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Let's show you what I'm talking about here. This first one's asking me to find the linearization of f of x is equal to 8x to the ninth at, remember, the value a is just the value of x of interest. So you think of it as a equals one or at x equals one. Now you can see I, I already have my answer typed in and it was correct. Here's where it came from. I said, okay, uh, here's the function that I want the linearization. They might as well just say, find the equation of the tangent line when X is equal to one. It, this is the same thing. So our linearization formula though, specifically is L of X is equal to the function evaluated at the point of interest plus the derivative evaluated at the point of interest times x minus the x value of interest. So you can see, well, since a is one, this is just gonna become f of one plus f prime of one times x minus one. All I have to do is evaluate the original function at one, find the derivative and evaluate it at one, plug my numbers in, done. That's what I do. Evaluate the original function at one, you get eight times one to the ninth, eight. Evaluate the derivative here. So I said, well, the derivative is going to be nine times eight is 72 and then x to the eighth. If you evaluate that derivative at one, clearly you're going to get a 72 times one to the eighth. So all I had to do was plug in the y value at the x value of interest, f of one is eight, plus f prime of one, 72 times the group x minus one. And it's probably better if you leave it in that format. Can you distribute the 72 and put it in slope intercept form? Eh, you can, but there's certainly no need to. Uh, just like that will be fine. Now in the next one here, same type of question. It, it's a little bit more interesting function. This time it's wanting me to find the linearization uh, of f of x is equal to the sine to the fifth power of x at a equals pi over four. Again, this might as well be saying, find the slope of the tangent line to the curve, y equals the sine to the fifth power of x when x is equal to pi over four. It's the same question. So you say, okay, uh, here's my function here. Here's the point of interest. I know I need to uh, evaluate that function at the point of interest. So that's f of pi over four. That's gonna be the sine of pi over four raised to the fifth power. Well, I know the sine of pi over four is the square root of two over two. That's easy. Now I need to raise that to the fifth power. And I know that every two powers of the square root of two is a factor of two. So the square root of two to the fourth power is just two times two, that's four. And then I would have another factor of the square root of two. So square root of two to the fifth power gives me four on the root of two. Two to the fifth power gives me 32. Uh, then I just reduce that down, 4 over 32, reduce it down to 1 over 8. So this simplifies to the root of 2 over 8. Now, that answer is great for f of pi over 4. I need to now find the derivative and evaluate it. So when I think of the derivative, I know that that sine of x is raised to the fifth power. That 5 comes down in front of that group of the sine of x. Then I raise it to the fourth times the derivative of the inside, derivative of sine is cosine. So this is my chain rule derivative for that fifth power of the sine function. Now I need to evaluate that at 
pi over four. We already know that the sine of pi over four is going to be the square root of two over two. So I'll have five times square root of two over two to the fourth. But then the cosine evaluated at pi over four is also the square root of two over two. So we know that this portion is going to be the same thing as what I have right here. But now I'm multiplying it by five. So I can say, well, it's going to be five on the root of two over eight. Now, for the linearization formula, every single solitary time, it's the function evaluated at the x value of interest plus the derivative evaluated at the x value of interest times x minus that x value of interest, which is your a value. So you can say, well, all right, the function evaluated at pi over four is the square root of two over eight plus the derivative evaluated at pi over four, that's my five on the root of two over eight times x minus pi over four final linearization answer there. And you can see that that's precisely how I entered it in on achieve and it was fine. Uh, next problem, pretty much the same idea. I'll go ahead and show my work for it. This time I was given y is equal to the group 14 plus x to the negative one half power and asked to find the linearization at uh, a equals one. So I already knew that the linearization function in terms of x was going to be the function evaluated at 1 plus the derivative evaluated at 1 times x minus 1. It's just a matter of finding these two values. So the function evaluated at 1, y evaluated at 1, that's just going to be 14 plus 1, which is 15, to the negative 1 half power. That looks sloppy in that format, though. So I fixed it, and I said, well, 15 to the negative 1 half power means one over the square root of 15. Now, I have my uh, function evaluated at one, and notice I went ahead and plugged that in there. Now I need to know the derivative evaluated at one. Uh, and then I'll say, well, first you need to know the derivative. A group to a power, that power came down in front, times that group to the one lower power. And then you do did need to think about times the derivative of the inside, but that's just a one, so nothing to worry about there. Now, when I simplified this, I said this is better written as negative one over two on the square root of 14 plus x cubed. I chose to put the cubed on the outside. It could have been on the inside. Uh, now, the reason I chose to put it on the outside is it was easier for me to think about. Here's what I mean. Whenever I'm trying to simplify this by plugging in the one, I know that this square root is going to be the square root of 15. So now my y prime of one is going to be negative one over two times the root of 15 cubed. The root of 15 cubed, that's the root of 15 times the root of 15, which is 15, and then times another root of 15. Well, that 15 multiplies the existing factor of two and gives me a 30. And then I have my third factor of the root of 15 left over down there. So this is the best simplification. And please notice, I did not rationalize. Rationalizing uh, denominators is not a helpful technique in general. So now I said my linearization formula, it's f of 1 right here. And then plus, but uh, f of, or f prime of 1 was negative. So that plus changed to a minus. 1 over 30 on the root of 15 times your x minus 1. Final answer circled there, and you can see uh, Chief liked it. Uh, ooh, um, gorgeous. This next problem, if you were to plug in these values, you're going to get pretty large values. So this one you need to keep in exact format. Uh, it's asking us to find the linearization of the exponential function uh, e to the square root of 3x at x is equal to 64. So I can say, well, every single time the linearization function is the function at the x value of interest plus the derivative at that value times x minus that value. So you say, well, all right, uh, in order to get this, I need to evaluate the function at 64. Well, if you plug a 64 into that function, that's just going to become the square root of 3 times 64, which is the square root of 92, as the exponent for your exponential function. Chose to leave it like that in exact format. Now, I need the derivative. And here, this is a little tricky. You can say, but 
the derivative of every single exponential function in existence is that exponential function times the derivative of its exponent. So now here, I was thinking, well, its exponent is 3x to the 1 half power. How do you take the derivative of a group to a power? Bring the power down in front, the 1 half came down in front, times the group to the 1 lower power to the negative 1 half power, times the derivative of the inside, which is 3. Now, I thought that this needed to uh, improve its looks. It looks kind of sloppy here with a negative uh, fractional exponent. So I cleaned it up. I said, I'm going to have a factor of 3 over 2 times this e to the square root of 3x power. And then this factor of 3x to the negative 1 half is really a better written as a square root of 3x in the denominator. So now I have my derivative. I need to evaluate it at 64. The only thing that's going to happen anytime you plug 64 in for x, of course, those square roots are going to become the square root of 192. So I get to this answer. Now I go back to my linearization function. It's the function evaluated at 64, which we already knew was e to the root of 192, plus the derivative evaluated at 64, which I had right here. The only thing I did when I entered it in is I just said, well, instead of putting that 3 over 2 in the numerator, I said it's a factor of 3 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. It doesn't matter, though. This is fine. This is also fine. I just thought it looked a little better. Times your group, x minus 64. And you can see this is precisely how I entered this answer into achieve. And achieve liked it. Uh, up next, uh, this is really still linearization formulas. It's just bringing it up with the idea of a differential. So now it's asking us, remember the change in f, it really was the change in the y values of a function. Now it's explicitly saying, find the change in the y value using differentials where your function is y is equal to the cosine of 2x, the x value of interest, a, is pi over 12, and the change in x, or dx, is 0.065. Uh, okay, in order to find that in this problem, here's what I did. I said, this is just the problem that they gave me. And then I can say, well, all right, I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative. This time I'm going to call the derivative as it's fine to call it. It's the derivative of y with respect to x, dy dx. Derivative of cosine is negative sine of that angle times the derivative of that angle. Now, that enabled me to literally say, well, yes, I could think of this as dy, the derivative of y with respect to x. You can also think about it as the infinitesimally small change in y divided by the infinitesimally small change in x. That dy over dx, it literally can be treated as a fraction. So now we can multiply both sides by dx, and I can say, well, then dy is equal to negative 2 sine of 2x times dx. That enables us to see then, well, dy, that's like the change in y. So I can say, well, then the change in y is approximately equal to this function evaluated. Remember, a is a value of x, dx is the change in your x value. So you just say, well, now go ahead and evaluate it at your value of x and at your value of dx. So I plug that in x is equal to a, which is equal to pi over 12, dx is equal to 0 0.065, and then this worked out pretty nicely because I knew that my sine function is going to be the sine of 2 times pi over 12, that's the sine of pi over 6. I know the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, so those first two factors almost just cancel each other out. It's a negative 2 times the 1 half, leaves me a factor of negative 1, times the 0 0.065. That's where I got the negative 0 0.065 for the change in the y value over this function. So I can say, is that the approximate change in the y value? Yes, it is. Uh, and for number eight, same type of problem. It's asking us to estimate delta y using differentials. So the problem that they gave me this time was this quotient, 32 minus x to the fourth divided by 2 plus x to the fourth. The x value of interest is at 1, and the change in your x value is going to be 1 100. 
So this time the derivative was a little more involved. I had to go ahead and show that right here. The derivative of y with respect to x, I had to square the denominator, bring the denominator up to the numerator, times the derivative of the numerator, minus the numerator, and then I had to say times the derivative of the denominator. Now at this point, between this step and this step, I had to make sure to distribute correctly throughout my numerator. So I distributed the negative 4x cubed to the first binomial. That gave me negative 8x to the third and then minus 4x to the seventh. Now, please be careful with subtracting this second product. So I said, well, 4x cubed times 32. Uh, that's going to give me 128x cubed. This is going to make it minus 128x cubed. Now, whenever you multiply this, you say, ooh, well, 4x cubed times a negative x to the fourth, that would be a negative 4x to the seventh, but you're subtracting it. That makes it positive 4x to the seventh. Please notice your x to the seventh terms, they just cancel out. So then I'm left with negative 8x cubed minus 128x cubed for a total of uh, negative 136x cubed over that denominator squared. And I can say, okay, but what am I going to do with that derivative? You use it for your differential formula. This is dy dx is equal to this. So I can say dy is equal to this function times dx. So then I can say, well, all right, then if I want to estimate the approximate change in y at this value of x and at this change in x, I should be able to. Why, certainly. The change in y is going to equal negative 136 times 1 cubed. I just put 1 there. All over your denominator, if you plug a 1 in for x, that's going to just be uh, 2 plus 1 is 3, and you're going to have a 3 squared down there. All of that's multiplied by your change in x, which is 0.01. When I did that, it asked me to round this answer to four decimal places. You can see I did at negative 0.1511, and that's precisely what Achieve wanted there. Uh, for the last question here, I can see some people being confused by this one. For my problem, it's wanting me to estimate what the y value at 5.07 is if I know the y value at 4 is 2, and I know what the slope at four is. Well, now what it's going to have me do is it's literally going to have me use this pink line to approximate what f of 5.07 is. Now I can already see that pink line is going to be an underestimate of what it really should be. f of 5.07 is gonna be higher than my estimation for f of 5.07, but we're supposed to give the estimated value. Here's how that works here. So you say, well, the function evaluated at 5.7, according to our linear approximation formula, should be approximately, well, whatever the function is at four, plus the derivative at four, times the difference of the x value you want to go and four. And I really should have went ahead and plugged in 5.07 there. Uh, I did in the next step. So now I can say, all right, this just comes from your linearization formula. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's find f of four. Well, f of four, please notice it was clear as day on your chart, my f of four was two. Now, how do I find f prime of four? Well, we don't have a function in here, but we certainly can find the slope at four because we can find the slope of this line. You can say, well, f prime of four is nothing more than the slope of the pink line which would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Please notice that's what I did right here. I just said f prime of four, it's the second y value minus the first y value over the second x value minus the first x value. That told me that that pink line was increasing at a rate of two y units per six x units or a slope of one third. That is my derivative at four. Uh, or my slope at four, same, same thing. So now when I go back into my function, I can plug this in. F of 5.07 should be approximately F of four, which is two, plus the slope. Well, the slope tells you that your function's changing approximately at a rate of one third y unit per x unit. So 
plus the slope of one third times your change in X units. Well, the change in X units is gonna be 5.07 minus four. So you say, oh, okay, yeah. So this Y value uh, uh, at 5.04 is gonna be the Y value at four plus one third times the change in X, which your X is going to the right 1.07 units. So you say, well, the Y value should go up from two approximately 1.07 times a third of a unit since the y values went up approximately a third of the x value. When I did that, I got 2.357 and please notice, and it was, we were supposed to round to three decimal places there. Please notice that's precisely what Achieve wanted. Okay, hopefully this helps you out with this section 4.1. As always, please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be glad to help.